So I recently stumbled across a new HTML element, well, at least new to me, called the dialog element. Now this element easily allows us to create a custom dialog box to display a user with a modal and out of the box comes packed with some really awesome features that will just make our life a lot easier when creating a modal. So within this video, what we're going to do is compare whether or not it's worth it to use a dialog element compared to your more traditional approach to creating a modal using some divs. Now to get started, let's take a look at how we might commonly create a modal. So first off, we're going to create a div here, which is going to have a class of modal wrap, and this will wrap our entire modal. And what we would use this for is to maybe apply like a background color to the whole screen so that the modal really pops. Then we'll have a class here of display none, which would be like a helper class, which will allow us to not actually show this modal by default. And then we also have this data attribute on here, which I'll explain why we're using this in a moment. Now, next up, we're going to actually have the modal itself. So we'll have another div of the class of modal, and then we'll have our modal content here. And and then to open up this modal, we're going to need to have a button. So for the styling, what we want to first do is target our modal wrap selector. Then we're going to set a display to grid. And the reason why we're doing a display to grid is so that we can easily align everything to the center using the place items property and setting that to center. We're going to set a fixed position on here. We're going to set a height of 100 VH. Then we'll set the width to be 100%. We'll set a top and left property to zero. And then we'll also set a background color on here to an RGBA value of black with an opacity of 60%. Then we want to target our modal here and we're going to add some simple styles here. So a border radius to, you know, make it look a little bit nice around the corners. Then we'll add some padding to the top and bottom of 20 pixels and then 30 pixels on the left and right. We'll set a width property here with the min function of 400 pixels or 80%. And then finally, we have a background color here of whites. Now to bring this all together, we just want to add some JavaScript. So let's start by defining some variables here. So the first one we're going to have is for our open modal button. Then we'll have one for our closed modal button. And then we're going to have one for the modal itself. Now, if you recall, I mentioned I was using data attributes on these HTML elements. And the reason why I'm using these is because this is how I'm going to target those HTML elements here within my JavaScript file. So what we want to do next is we want to listen for a click on our open modal button. And when we hear that click, we want to target our modal here and we want to remove that class of display none. OK, then we also want to do the same thing for our closed modal button here. So we're going to listen for a click on the closed modal. But instead of removing the class of display none, we're going to add it back to our modal here. And now here inside of our browser, if we click on this button, it's going to open our modal. And if we click on the close button, it's going to close that modal. And now you know how to create a simple modal. Now, really quick as an added bonus, the project that I'm implementing this modal into was actually a video I created not too long ago where we build out a really cool animated page progress bar using some simple vanilla JavaScript. So as we begin to scroll down the page here, you're going to see at the very top, we have this nice progress bar, which is going to animate and continue to fill up as we continue down the screen. So if you're looking for a little fun project to do to practice some JavaScript, I'll leave a link down below in the description to this video. So before we begin to look at the dialogue element, I think it's very important to, you know, address any of the possible drawbacks that may come when using a new element like we're going to be using here today. So the first thing I like to do when using something I haven't personally used before is come to a site called caniuse.com. Now, what this site does is it gives us insight on whether or not we can use that certain element or that CSS property within a certain browser. And as you can see here, I pulled up the information for the dialog element, and it is actually widely supported across all the modern browsers, which is really good. So another site that I also like to reference is called MDN Web Docs, and it has a lot of great information on, you know, elements and properties that you may be trying to use. And one thing I did see here that is on the documentation I do want to point out is that the dialogue element still has some usability issues when it comes to some forms of assistive technology or, you know, its accessibility. Now, although accessibility is very important, we have to consider that when we build a modal just using some standard divs, we don't have any sort of accessibility out of the box. Where the dialogue element currently doesn't have any accessibility, but I guarantee you at some point in the future that it's going to gain support for accessibility. And also the dialogue element like we're going to be seeing here shortly has a bunch of features that are going to make it very useful to consider this element versus your standard div. 
Now, like I mentioned, when we use a dialogue element, we gain access to some features such as a backdrop pseudo element. There is some built-in functions that we actually use to hide and show the dialogue element itself. There is some default styling that comes out of the box. We also even have the ability to close that modal when it's open using the escape key, which is pretty cool. And lastly, this is also a semantic tag, which it's always a good thing to incorporate semantic elements into your web page. So let's take a look at how we can now create a modal using the dialog element. So first off, we want to define our dialog tag here, and we're going to keep this data attribute here of data modal new so that we can target it within our JavaScript. Then next, we're going to create a div here with a class of modal. Now, we don't actually need this to create a modal using the dialog element, but for a feature that I want to implement into this modal using the dialog element, we're going to need this. So we'll come back to this in a little bit. Then inside of here, we're just going to have our modal content, and then once again, we just need to define a button here to actually open up our modal. So how we actually open and close this modal using the dialog element is a little bit different than we seen earlier with the first modal that we created just using some divs. So before we had to have a class on here of display none and by default we would not see the actual modal itself. Well when we use the dialog element here if we actually head over to our browser you'll see that we don't actually see anything currently on the page. And as you can see here we're not seeing the modal within our browser. So how you show and hide this modal while using this element here is we pass an attribute onto the element itself called open. Now, this by default will actually render in the modal when we first load into the page. So as you can see now here inside of our browser, we're going to see our modal because we have defined the open attribute on the element itself. So let's begin to implement some JavaScript so that way we can open and close our modal using our buttons. Now you may think since we added the open attribute to the element itself that all we need to do to toggle the modal from being open and close is just add and remove that open attribute to our dialog element and that's actually not the case. When using this element, we actually get access to some built-in functions that we can use to actually show and hide our modal here. So first off for our JavaScript, we're gonna be using the same three variables here of open modal, close modal, and then we actually are targeting our entire modal here. So what we wanna do is we wanna have our add event listener here and we're gonna listen for a click on our open modal button. Now what we're gonna do is actually run a function called show modal, which we get access to, like I mentioned, when we use this element. Now I also to mention we have another function we can use called modal show and you may be wondering what is the difference between these two functions here well the show modal function here that we're calling on the dialog element which is actually referred to our modal here will create that element to become a modal and there are some default styles that are going to be applied when we actually run this function here to you know make it into a modal where when we call the show function here what's actually happening is we're creating more of an inline dialog box, which is very similar to what we've seen happen when we added the open attribute manually to our dialog element. So since you want to create a modal, we're going to be sticking with our show modal function here. And lastly, what we want to do is just to find another add event listener for our close modal button here. And whenever we click on this, we want to run a function on our modal called close, and this will simply just close our modal. And now back here inside of our browser, if we click on our button here, we should see our modal appear, which we do. So what you're seeing right here is the default behavior of this dialog element. So first off, I'm not really sure if you can see this that well, but we have this nice backdrop to our modal here, and that's done using the backdrop pseudo selector. And if we close this out, you can kind of get a better visual of that when we open and close, you can kind of see that backdrop being applied here. Now what we can also do is instead of actually clicking on the close button here to close our modal while it's open we can actually press the escape key and that'll also close out our modal here. And lastly, we have the pop-up modal itself. So by default, it comes with a black border on all the sides, and then it has a white background. Now, this modal by default should actually be in the center of our screen, and I wanted to include this little issue that I've seen many users having when incorporating the dialog element where it goes to the top left-hand corner of their screen. So let's head back to our code and see exactly why this is happening. So one common thing that we tend to do within many of our projects is something called a set where we target our universal selector here and we set the padding to zero and we also set the margin to zero. Now what's actually happening with our dialog element here is when we set the margin to zero for our universal selector here it's actually affecting the default behavior of the margin that comes with the dialog element allowing it to be pushed to the center of our screen. Now in order to fix this it's actually pretty simple so we want to target our dialog element here and then we just want to set the margin to auto auto. 
And now as you can see that we made that change, our modal is now here into the center of our screen. Now, although this element comes with some default styling, which is great, we may not want to keep that and we may want to customize some things. So let's first take a look at how we can customize the backdrop here. So in order for us to update this, what we want to do is target that pseudo element of backdrop here on our dialog selector. And then we have full control over the background color of the actual backdrop here of our modal. So for example, if we change it to something like blue here and we save it. Now the entire backdrop is going to be blue, but I definitely don't recommend doing a solid color. So for example, we probably may want to add an opacity here. We can just say like something like, you know, 0.5 or something like that. And that's going to look a lot better here. So we have full control over the actual background here of our modal using this backdrop pseudo element. Now let's take a look at the actual styling here for our modal because let's be honest, the default styling that we get here isn't all too great. So say for example, we want to remove this really ugly border around our entire modal, we would first want to target our dialogue selector here. So we would just say a border and set that to none. And as you can see here, that's going to remove the border. And we may also want to add something like a simple box shadow here to make this modal pop a little bit more. So I would like to add some padding here to our modal, but instead of adding the actual padding property here to our dialog, if you recall, we actually wrapped all of our content here inside of a div of the class of modal. And I informed you that you'd see why later on, and we'll actually be getting to that feature here next. But just for now, what we're going to do is we're going to target the modal selector here, and we're going to add our padding to the top and bottom of 20 pixels and the left and right of 30. So taking a look at our modal here, we have a few different ways that we can currently close this. So for example, if we click on close here, that's going to close it. If we open it back up, we can use the built-in feature to click escape and it's going to close it. But one other common you know, feature that you may want to implement with the modal is the ability to click outside of the modal and have it close. So let's take a look at how we can implement that with this element. Now here within my JavaScript file, I'm just going to start out with a comment here defining what we're doing. Then next we want to create a add event listener for our modal here and we want to listen for a click. And we're also going to pass in the event parameter here. Now next we're going to write an if condition here where we're going to say if the event.target is actually equal to our modal, then all we simply want to do is run our modal.close function. And now if we go to open up our modal here and we click anywhere outside, you can see that the modal is going to close. But if we open this back up, and we click anywhere inside of the modal, you can see it's not going to close. And the reason why this works is because we wrapped all of our modal content inside of the div with the class of modal. Okay, so now that we've had the opportunity to create a modal using both of these different methods, I personally feel that the dialog element is going to be the preferred choice for me for creating a modal. It just has so many features that come with it out of the box that it makes it very hard to pass up. So I'm very curious to see what you guys' thoughts are about this. Let me know down below in the comments. All right, so that's all I have for you guys here today. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like on it down below. And if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more content like this.